कल बुला के सर को दिखा काइंडली बुल बुल द डोर वेल गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन एक्चुअली टुडे देर इज लेस टाइम एंड टुडे आई हैव टू कंप्लीट बिकॉज यू आर गोइंग टू राइट द एग्जाम ऑन फ्राइडे एंड विद इन दस आई डोंट हैव एनी क्लासेस Friday again, I'll be having after probably a test only. It will be there, so there is no use. So today, by the way, as much as possible, I'll try to complete rest of the things. Anyhow, it has been taught. You should read. Maybe little last two three things. It will be left. Still, then I will try to be very fast here. I'll avoid repeating so that you will be able to learn. Keep your notebook, your pen ready because the data what I will be giving here they are very important. Means instead of searching, you can pick up these things and read also. Now, very first one, what we are starting with is species area relationship. means if the area increases then species will increase or not this is the question now on this topic actually different scientists have studied ecologists have studied and they have seen that no it it actually changes means more the area more will be the species this is what the conclusion we have come across well now what happened a scientist came and he started studying it and he plotted he started plotting simply listen to me here nothing to write everything is there in the textbook and this is only for reference he plotted it and when he plotted on the graph what species against the area then he found a hyperbola is that clear now rectangular hyperbola now what he did is the formula was s is equal to ca to the power z now then he converted into log taking log on both the sides it gives to log s is equal to log c plus z log a this we know and when this is reprinted after converting it into log scale when those values are put it gave a very straight line and with a slope is that clear right now the scientist name is alexander humboldt remember this is name is alexander humboldt and every 
short form what is given here a stands for area s stands for species richness z stands for slopes of the line and c is y intercept where it is going and hitting the y axis is that clear so this is the graph he found out and from there he concluded that what irrespective of taxa irrespective of type of animal irrespective of type of plants whatever plants or whatever animals you take and find out the species richness against area they found the value of z to be 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 0.1 to 0.2. Remember this value they found in any anywhere in any taxa. Any taxa. Taxa means different different types of species. Any species they you take, you will get this result. But with with a limit. But with a limit. Up to a limit only. Is that clear? Now later on, what they saw when they did the same work in large areas like continents large areas like continents entire continent when they did they found that the z value was increasing that means area become much bigger here entire continent i have taken than the previous one so bigger area then actually the value of z also increased 0.6 to 1.2 see here 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 was there but imagine how much it increased the minimum value only it became 0 0.6 maximum value became 1.2 almost six times of that see it 0.1 into 6 is 0 0.6, 0 0.2 into 6 is 1.2. So, 6 times it increases. This value and this value you have to remember. Anywhere, anywhere, if there is, it is a smaller area reason, then the value of Z will be irrespective of taxa. Any taxa you study, value will be 0.1 to 0.2. But when it becomes continents, the value becomes much more. Is that clear? Now, this was proved. Fruzivorous birds, the birds which eat fruits and fruzivorous mammals like bat. In them they did one test and they found the tropical forest. In the tropical forest they come, I mean they maintain the um, experiment. In the tropical forest the value became how much? 1.15. See, much bigger. 1.15. Much higher. So, remember, in smaller regions, it will be less, value will be less, species is to richness, species richness to area, but in case of very large places like continents, the value will be much more. Is that clear? Now, after this, we will be seeing what is the importance of this species, uh, species richness. Always we are telling species is very important, very important, then what is the importance of it? We are going to study now. Importance of species, diversity importance of species diversity species diversity means more number of species should be there very large number of species are there then we will call that species are in diverse condition or species diversity is there now the species diversity concludes what more the number of species then community is more stable in a community if more species are there then the community will be more stable in this manner only you write down because more species will result in a stable community this is the result of this now if there is more stable community is there then productivity will be more definitely more plants more animals means their products what they give that will be always more only so this equation is very important on this we can base many questions we can do it remember don't forget this now in order to confirm this another gentleman worked his name is david tillman david tillman's experiments he took plots and in that plot what he did is he saw that where there is less species diversity the biomass was varying every year noted down in small plots he conducted experiments david tillman where species richness was less and the, he saw that the biomass or the productivity what formed from there was variable remember i am not telling less or more because if the species increases in that area productivity will be more if the species decreases productivity will be less means in less species richness the productivity will be variable year to year understand and if you are getting more means if the species richness is very high then what was happening the variation was not seen remember this is that clear the variation was 
not seen more species gave rise to what less variable year to year biomass understood when species are more then it became less it became less that means for our this biological productivity is very necessary for our survival so that's why remember biodiversity or species richness is very very important now i will talk about biodiversity versus man how it is important for man just now i gave you one example indirectly that we got from tillman's experiment david tillman's experiment more the number of species or species richness is high then what will be the benefit on the other side biomass will be more the productivity will be more and productivity is more in in the i mean plants and animals means who who are enjoying that it is human being that way it is very very important remember then if the species are reducing will there be effect certainly yes there will be effect understand there will be effect if any species they are getting extinct then we are also affected so in order to understand this some examples are taken this ant ant species are exactly about 2000 species are there uh, 20000 species are there in the nature ant species are how many are there 20000 species are there is that clear and if suddenly there will be 15000 species 15000 species they get extinct will that affect us if you ask a common man the common man will never say yes it will affect he will say that no it will not affect why directly ant and we have direct relationship are very very less and if they are not there we will die this thought will not come to them but remember this will happen and we will be affected even though ants are not directly related to us in order to prove that another scientist came paul elrich paul elrich he gave us one beautiful theory concept that is rivet popper popper theory rivet popper theory he gave his name is paul elrich his theory is rivet popper theory this i will explain you all know what he com compared is he compared the ecosystem with the plane aeroplane he compared ecosystem with the aeroplane and rivets in an aeroplane there will be thousands and thousands of rivets that nuts and bolts simple language nuts and bolts you can say rivets there will be thousand and he compared that with the species in the ecosystem am i clear then third one he one more thing he took rivets on the wing on the wing of the plane as key species is that clear now what he says if a plane is there we all are boarding into it and if every passenger will open one one rivet one one rivet if he opens then immediately there will not be any problem but in the long run if that if that is continued losing like that one 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 then the plane will be dismantled and there can be crash similarly while opening if the rivet of the wing of the plane is also opened then there will be very quickly there will be a disaster I mean this loss of species what is happening if they are dying we are suffering but if it is a key species then there may be a disaster in the ecosystem that is what he wanted to tell us and that theory is called as rivet popper theory remember pop per theory remember this that means every single species is important for our existence and now next part we will see loss of biodiversity why we are losing these things what is making that so we are losing what this biodiversity we are losing reasons for by i mean what are these losses what are these losses so far we have got that we will see then we will see reasons is that clear now i am writing and talking about losses of biodiversity understand it is a very full of data only you have to write along with my teaching when i am going on telling you have to go on writing right now in the last 500 years we have lost 784 species remember in the last 500 years we have lost 784 species and in that vertebrates are 338 
invertebrates are 359 and plants are 87 see such a huge loss in just 500 years now next one is then recently very recently maybe 30 40 50 years back we have lost one beautiful bird called dodo in mauritius mauritius this bird was there like duck like it is is there and it was there actually today it is not there it is very recently it is got extinction now another one is quagga in africa quagga in africa is lost recently only again recently we lost thylacine in australia thylacine is a is an animal which is lost in australia stiller sea cows in russia these things we have lost very very recently is that clear so now apart from this what else we have lost we have also lost tiger subspecies such as bali javan and caspian then these three plus three types of subspecies of tigers were there one was bali it is a name of subspecies javan is also name of subspecies and caspian these three types of subspecies of tigers are also lost from the earth now next at present these are lost at present how many species are at danger it is 15000 species are facing extinction 15000 species are facing extinction remember very very important 15000 species are facing extinction now out of this 15000 12 percent are birds 23 percent of mammals 32 percent amphibian 31 percent of gymnosperms so please see this data is very important for you i will repeat once again as on today's date we have 15000 species who are facing extinction in this 15000 12 percent of 15000 you can imagine what will be the number so 12 percent of this are actually facing uh, their extinction facing extinction and they are birds 23 percent of this are mammals they are facing extinction similarly 32 percent of amphibians out of this 15,000 are facing and 31 percent of gymnosperms they are also facing extinction is that clear now in the last three billion years means after the life came after it grew up after all those developments took place in the last three billion years five spells of mass extinction the earth has seen means maybe due to volcanic eruption maybe due to some floods maybe due to some other reasons is that clear five spells of very huge extinction which is called as mass extinction the earth has seen in the past when no science was there no knowledge was there but still we will now see how that is better and this is worse now now at present the extinction mass extinction which is going on at the present now the present is we are facing one mass extinction and this is 100 to 1000 times more than those five extinctions see now we have knowledge we are re reading we are literate we are intelligent we know good and bad still the way we are killing the animals and plants or destroying diversity is 100 100 to 1000 times more than those mass extinctions seen in the last 3 billion years is that clear and if this type of extinction will continue then in 100 years about 50 percent of all animals and plants species will be destroyed 50 percent of all animals and plants will be destroyed now we will see the reasons of this destruction very first one is habitat loss habitat loss is the most dangerous out of all reasons this is always number one along with this if any other choice is given which is most dangerous reason then you will write about habitat reasons reasons of biodiversity loss one is habitat loss is that clear and in this there are four reasons one is habitat loss second one is over exploitation exploitation third one is alien invasion 
and fourth one is your co-extinction okay so these are the different things first these four because they are four they are called as evil quartet evil quartet q u a r t e t these are called as evil quartet evil quartet remember is that clear now habitat when we are destroying their home home habitat means what home only when we are destroying their home what will happen naturally they will not be able to stay and they are going to be affected very very badly is that clear and you will be surprised to know this amazonian forest is one of the greatest forest in tropical area it has got very rich biodiversity there what we are doing is actually we are cutting the jungle and we are trying to uh, have crop of uh, soya there soya bean and definitely soya bean is not that it will never give you that much of return than if the plants and animals would have been maintained there is that clear so that is not only doing that i have already discussed so i am avoiding the discussion on this point in the tropical latitudinal please check your notebooks latitudinal effects i have told you in that in that amazons story is there given total thing how much area it uh, has got how many plant species how many animal species still how many are to be discovered so many things i have given a very big data i have given you yesterday is it there so i am not repeating so there we are causing such type of destruction and once habitat loss means there will be what biodiversity loss second one is over exploitation over exploitation means if we go for our interest narrow interest we are going and killing the animals destroying the plants so this is our exploitation yes we can use it but there should not be over exploitation and due to over exploitation right down we have lo lost in the last 500 years in the last 500 years stiller sea cow and passenger pigeon stiller sea cow and passenger pigeon we have lost due to over exploitation this word is important for you these two examples for over exploitation rem aisa question aayega aapko is that clear this animal was extinct due to habitat loss this that all over exploitation will be there is that clear two species i gave you two things one is stiller cow and the one is your passenger pigeon again another thing is there that is alien species invasion alien species mean that is not local one actually nile perch nile perch was introduced into lake victoria it is an example only means how other foreign ones are coming and attacking and the local ones are destroyed by this loss so lake victoria this you have to write down this is a new thing victoria lake victoria nile perch one species of fish was introduced and due to this this became very invasive attacking understand nile perch was very much attacking their number grew very fast they killed about 200 species of cichlid fish these are local they were all living in the lake victoria and nowhere else due to this introduction of nile perch which is an alien species foreign species all these cichlid fish were destroyed this is just an example of your alien species is that clear next one we will see carrot grass parthenium lantana water hyacinth write down four names these are also alien species i'll repeat carrot grass parthenium lantana and water hyacinth is that clear and recently clarius garia pines i'll write the name here for you clarius garia pinus this is a fish it was introduced into the africa is that clear and this also caused destruction greater destruction of local species names are not given only re remember clarius garia pinus is that clear now next thing we will see why we should conserve why should we conserve next question is why should we conserve 
next thing i will see why we should conjure why to conserve here there are three reasons are there one is narrow utilitarian reasons second one is broad utilitarian third one is ethical reasons first one is narrow utilitarian means selfish interest what benefit i am getting directly for example i am getting flesh from different animals i am getting fruits and flowers from uh, uh, plants isn't it and i am getting eggs from animals like this directly honey we are getting medicinal plants we are getting so directly we are benefited so at least common sense we should use if the jungle is there if the uh, entire biodiversity is maintained then only we will get these things plentifully if we will kill destroy the biodiversity we are not going to get anything from there so this is purely narrow utilitarian concept selfish concept second one is broad utilitarian imagine the carbon dioxide that we are Uh, giving out and oxygen we are consuming how much oxygen we are consuming in our lifetime and what is the population of human beings if biodiversity is destroyed like that the quantity of oxygen will not uh, i mean oh, carbon dioxide will not be replaced by uh, oxygen and it may a time may come when we will die is that clear if there will be only giving out carbon dioxide there will be wo- what global warming will be there and it is happening also in several places and uh, weather is changing climate is changing so that's why actually and the animals bees and other insects they are pollinating is it possible if they would have not been there if pollinators are not there can your rice or wheat or any other crop will be successful no because we can't pollinate we don't have any other scientific method to do it so for all these benefits what we are getting from biodiversity we should save now last one is ethical ethical means actually there is you cannot give life to anybody then what right you have got to kill this is one thing and the thing if you need surviving if you demand that i want to live then what what is wrong with other animals why they should not live they also have a right to survive so if we have a right to survive then they also have a right to survive so at least we should feel that super power is something is there at least we should use our reasoning power and we should save them these are the three important reason that why we should conserve and now how to conserve methods of conservation methods of conservation two things are coming one is your in situ in situ conservation another one is ex situ conservation these are the two last topics anyhow we could successfully complete so of course many things uh, much more detail i could not deal because today i have to complete this for your exam because the exam is there in situ means in the place wherever they are there in situ means the place wherever they are there we will protect them we will make legal uh, rules this that and we will not will watch we will just guard such places where large number of animals and others plants are there and they they should not be cut so we can stop them that is in the same place wherever they are there in situ means the place where they have grown up is that clear the the same place where they have grown up so what are those things we will see now these are actually biodiversity where we are protecting by in situ in situ is your bio sphere reserve noted down these are all coming under multiple choice question these are all in situ a b national parks wildlife sanctuaries these are the places so these are things comes under your in situ conservation means in all these places the animals will not be taken out from that place they will remain as they are living and we will protect and that entire that geographical area along with the biodiversity 
not only this plus this these are direct things questions will come examples of in situ conservation these will come another one is their sacred groove all of us know sacred groove means the jungles or such places where which are treat i mean related with god or with some super power and they do worship and all and the local people do not allow the animals of that place to be cut or the plants to be cut so now sacred group now this due to this also since centuries our uh, our ancestors they were more wise than us perhaps they had made such sacred groups in the name of god at least they had kept it so that people do not kill and biodiversity is protected so what are they present we'll write down or directly i will dictate you write down khasi and jayantia hills meghalaya khasi and jayantia hill in meghalaya students i have to be a bit fast there is no other way because your test is there ahead <coughs> all these data this chapter is full of data every data you have to remember that's what i am telling you repeatedly khasi and jayantia hills then aravalli hills of rajasthan aravalli hills of rajasthan bastar chanda and sarguja bastar chanda and sarguja of mp okay these are the data under in situ conservation now ex situ conservation means in a jungle if there is a threatened species is there if that is facing danger and all then we take out those animal species or plant species and we protect in zoo or botanical garden or other ways which i will tell you now and protect means we change you take them lift them from their place of origin and place them in somewhere else and that is called as ex situ means out of their native place is that clear write down ex situ heading ex situ write down under ex situ what are coming i am giving you under ex situ what are coming i am giving you a list that also you have to remember geological park first one is geological park start writing under ex situ conservation geological park comes then botanical garden comes botanical garden comes this is also ex situ only not their native place then we have got wildlife safari wild life safari these are the places all related to ex situ conservation understand and ex situ conservation we can also do by cryo preservation cryo preservation cryo preservation means protecting their gametes at minus 196 degree centigrade and liquid nitrogen liquid nitrogen and minus 196 degree centigrade if you protect the cells of the gametes then that is called as cryo preservation by that also we can preserve then we can have tissue culture as well we can take little tissue and culture it so that by this way also we can preserve is that clear and apart from this actually finally entire world has thought and understood that today it is dangerous there are two conventions mentioned in our textbook one con conversion you can write down historic convention on bd biodiversity convention on biodiversity convention of biodiversity it is also called earth summit earth summit it was held in rio de janeiro it was held in rio de janeiro in 1992 and another was conducted in 2002 this was in 1992 as i told you the another one was called in 2002 and that was in johannesburg south africa and they all pledged they all promised that by 2010 there should be a considerable amount of reduction in the biodiversity loss is that clear so any other students i'm sorry because time was suddenly um, time was very less i thought the one more class i could take but it is not possible so 
of course i have completed everything you have to go through the book textbook read every data very very important every data every name that is very important questions can come so prepare yourself accordingly okay now right god bless you please work hard this is we are at the last peg of it we don't know now earlier it was in december they were telling it will open now it is also doubtful so please prepare whatever you are reading from us uh, reading whatever you are learning that only is important for you thank you very much